What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing the headphones, it's because we got an interview. We got a pretty big severe weather outbreak coming, so I need to call up some bath. <laughs> Sorry, I need to call up some backup. So I brought Ethan WX in. Ethan, how are you doing? Go on. I'm doing great today. How about you? Doing wonderful myself. I've um, been keeping an eye on this whole severe threat we're looking at. So the first thing I want to talk about is this whole moderate risk that's going on. I wouldn't say moderate risk rather than moderate risks because we have two of them, which that's in itself is pretty extraordinary. Please elaborate the audience if you don't mind what we're looking at. We have a pretty complex setup uh Tomorrow, we have a big mid-latitude cyclone kind of tracking through Nebraska into Iowa, and later that'll move off to the north northeast into Minnesota and Canada. And with that, we're going to have a very major outbreak of, of far-reaching outbreak of severe weather. Right now, we basically have areas from Texas eastward to Ohio and West Virginia even, all the way up to Wisconsin and Minnesota. That entire region of the country is expected to see severe weather, and we have two heavily concentrated areas that are supposed to see the peak of this event. Um, we got two moderate risks. One is located in eastern Iowa and northwest Illinois. And then the other is kind of down in the Mississippi Valley in northeast Arkansas, west Tennessee, a uh, little bit of Kentucky, and then the southeast corner of Missouri. Yep, the boot and, Yeah, and that does include the city of Memphis, uh, Tennessee. Yep. All right. So... Yeah, with both of these moderate risks, we have a hatched 15% tornado probabilities. Uh, the northern one was a 10 until earlier today when they upgraded it to a 15 at this at 1730Z, which is 1230 Central. And then the southern one has been 15 for the last two outlooks. Then for our wind threat, we've got higher wind threat with the northern one, 45% hatched, and then we have a 40, uh, 30 hatched. Hatch, down yeah. Down. yeah, and then for hail... We have a 30% hatched for the northern risk and nothing higher for the southern one. Yeah, I've been noticing the hail threat's actually the least amount of threat, which is mostly the tornado and wind threat. Um, what do you think we could be expecting with all this moderate risk business? Well, with both moderate risk areas, you're going to see the potential for long track damaging tornadoes. Um, I think the I think the northern one, the one over eastern Iowa, northwest Illinois, is going to be the more significant uh, risk area because it does have higher wind and hail probs than the other one. I think there's a lot more forcing, a lot more speed shear up there. You're going to have very fast moving, very intense thunderstorms. Definitely the potential for strong long track tornadoes with that one. Right. And the southern one too, you have very good directional shear down there. Um, that's going to also be a, a very interesting area to watch for tornadoes, especially in the Memphis area. All right, thank you very much. Um, next thing I want to talk about is the HER model because the 18Z is coming out, and basically we're uh, we're seeing a very intense uh, band of supercells developing, especially in parts of Illinois, Missouri, St. Louis, especially Arkansas, and then another round of supercells in parts of Iowa, like you were mentioning. What could we see with the timing with all of this, and what's your thoughts on this latest run? Now, with the 18Z as we go forward, um, the first, actually, the first area of severe weather that's going to form is actually probably going to be the southern one. Okay. With what I'm seeing. Um, you're going to have storms there forming in the early afternoon. They'll be pretty messy at first, but then later in the day, uh, things are going to get more organized down there. And by the early evening hours, 7 p.m. or so, you're going to be seeing a number of discrete storms that move through and then kind of form into a QLCS further east overnight. Mm hmm. And then around, right around 4 to 5 p.m. is when the uh, severe storms up in Iowa go off. And those are going to fire up really quick. You know, at the 3 p.m., there's nothing there, there's, but there is a strong surface low. 4 p.m., and boom. Then, then 4 p.m., just bam, we got severe weather right away. And those storms are going to quickly move north and east into Illinois. And they're gonna, they are gonna kind of be, they're gonna become linear as they move into the Chicago metro area, but they're still gonna be very strong, definitely packing damaging winds. Hail and tornado threat will be reduced by the time it gets there, but it's still gonna be quite a wave of severe storms. And then those will push off to the east and uh, pretty much fall apart over Michigan and uh, eastern Indiana, yeah. parts of Ohio, while the rest of the system forms into a QLCS across the south and Appalachians tonight. Yeah. Um, what do you, oh, 
Go That's ahead. basically the the progression of these storms. All right. Based on the All right. Follow up question: Where do you think the greatest tornado threat's going to be? I'm looking at these models. It looks like northern Northwest Illinois has a very high potential for that. What uh, What's your thoughts on that? According to the SPC, we have about the same risk for the Mississippi River Valley to the south, and then also, you know, eastern Iowa, northwest Illinois. Right. Now, the storms to the south, they're going to be a bit more discreet, and I think they'll, and they're also, it's all, you're also going to have deep, more heating down there, so I think they'll be able to uh, kind of work with the conditions a little better, whereas the ones further north are going to become linear very fast. So that's one thing that works in the favor of the southern storms, but the northern storms have a lot more forcing, a lot more speed shear, and the overall conditions up there are just much more intense. So I think that those storms will be more severe. But overall, I'd say the tornado potential is about equal, but I think the northern storm has slightly more severe weather potential, the northern section of this. Yeah, I've been looking at that shear you were mentioning. We were pulling up a lot of soundings here on the channel, the last couple of videos we've been uh, that we've been updating people on. Um, we're seeing sh speed shear of over 100 knots at six kilometers. That's going to enhance supercell development. That that's a given right there. But the the one kilometers around 50 knots, three kilometers averaging around 50 to 60. For the audience, how extreme are these uh, are these shear values from your take of this? These are very high. Um, they're not the high. They're not like record high levels, but they are definitely more than enough to get. An outbreak of significant tornadoes. Yeah. They are they are prime numbers for severe weather, that's for sure. All right. Now another thing I want to mention is that, that the reason there's that thirty percent hail that we were mentioning is because I was looking at the cape. In fact, the her has this. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up. The her is showing some signs of potentially cracking three thousand cape uh, three thousand joules per kilogram in some of these areas that I'm looking at. That's probably gonna enhance hail development right there. What do you th uh, what do you th uh, think? We know both know higher the, if you push the cape too high, that's going to lead to a lot of hail. So, what's your thoughts on that? Now, yeah, you're going to definitely have high cape to the south too because it's going to be warmer. But really, the thing with the hail risk up north is at the upper levels, it's going to be at higher levels, it's going to be colder further right. north in Iowa and northwest Illinois as opposed to the deep south. Okay. So that, because of that, you're going to see hail developing much faster where. You know, the temperature decreases faster with high, quicker lapse rates than you will to the south. And also those storms, you know, with so much forcing, so much shear, those storms are going to be very severe very quickly. And with the colder upper levels, they are going to be producing very large hail, at least for the start of it. Once they become a QLCS, which is going to be not too long after they cross into Illinois, then they will become linear and they won't produce as much hail, but there's but at the start, yeah, there's definitely a pretty good chance of some significant hail for places between Des Moines, Cedar Rapids, maybe Davenport. So, yeah, definitely that's one threat to keep an eye on as well if you're in those areas. All right. So my last follow-up question. I'm seeing uh, the supercell composite numbers cracking 26 out of 35 in some of these areas, according to the HER. Um, the significant tornado parameter has been going nut house we're looking at 13.4 in some of these areas what's wow. your take on this like what like what we've i've been reporting it here on pat's path predictor but what's your perspective on this i mean obviously all of the ingredients are there for severe weather that's what that shows me um you know those indexes are really high but i think the only way that this could bust in my opinion would be something like what happened on March 28th, 2020, where the cap just doesn't break further north or further south. But I think that could be an issue further north. But at this point, I don't think it's going to happen. All the models have been very consistent with a major outbreak of severe thunderstorms. So, yeah, okay. it's going to be a, a very dangerous situation if you're in either of those areas. But I really think the northern one is going to be the more significant. All right. This is a question I have from one of my subscribers who... Uh, who commented this morning he alluded to the fact that there was going to be some rain happening and some storms happening in the morning in a lot of these areas i was i i was telling him it could go either way either it could bust the thing or it could or it could just make things worse what are you you're taking a look at the same data i am what do you think is going to happen uh, with all this going on now the thing is i i see that too though that convection moves across iowa uh, northwest Illinois around 2, 3 a.m. 
And then it gets to where we're at, Valpo, by the morning. And then by 11 a.m., it's pretty much clear out there through the whole risk area. And then maybe you get a few other storms that pop up because it's so unstable. But then you know, the, main, the main event doesn't get going until 4. So I think you're going to have plenty of time to build instability during that time. And I don't think it's going to affect it very much. Unless that stuff comes in a lot slower than expected. As in the affected areas still have convection by like 8 a.m., which is several hours later than they're expected to. I don't think that's going to be much of a risk of busting the event. Okay. All right, so uh, now that we got that one out of the way, my final question is, what should people be doing to prepare for this? I've been getting a lot of comments telling people uh, t- uh, f- of people freaking out about this. I, uh, I've been telling people to prepare, but I'm going to turn this one to you. What should people be doing to prepare for this? Yeah, I understand that some people are definitely very worried about this event. It's a very big, it looks big, and it's very intimidating when you see it on the SPC site, just seeing a risk area that large with two separate kind of peak regions of severe activity. But if you're in in these affected areas, first of all, if you're in uh, East Iowa, Northwest Illinois, which is where I think the highest risk will be, um, you know, after 4 p.m., pay special attention to any NWS alerts, any warnings that go out, um, be ready to take shelter. Uh, don't be on the roads because, you know, large hail damaging winds are very much a threat. And if you do get under in the tornado warning, take your tornado precautions. Um, I think most people know what those are in the Midwest. So, but yeah, don't, uh, I encourage people to not freak out about it. Um, this is event that, this is an event that you will know about in advance. And it, chances are it will probably start after school ends and uh, most people get back from work. So, mm-hmm. and then if you're in the Southern region, same thing, uh, just keep a special eye out for any warnings that go out. The storms on there are going to be a bit more discreet, so if things aren't really uh, going off in your area, if there's not really any bad weather going on, still stay aware because it could change very quickly. And then if you're in the intermediate zone, kind of in that enhanced risk between, you know, anywhere like St. Louis or, you know, southern Illinois, maybe into Indiana a little, still stay vigilant because... There are going to be storms that fire in that intermediate zone, and some of those will definitely become severe. They will produce um, hail, damaging winds. Maybe a, there might be a few tornadoes in that region, and then it will consolidate into a more linear, organized system overnight. Yeah. So, if you're in those areas, uh, you don't need to be as worried as the people further north or further or south. But you know, definitely be keeping your eye out for any any alerts that come up. Okay. All right, Ethan, thank you very much for coming on. I know people are really intense right now. The most important thing you can do right now is remain calm and get prepared using Ethan's tips he just uh, he just gave you. Um, if you uh, know where your safe spot is, um, uh, just get your preparedness plan re- uh, ready to go and just remain calm. Panic will make things worse. So I want to emphasize that very quickly before we end this. But Ethan, thank you very 100%. much. Yeah, th- Ethan, thank you. 100%, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Ethan, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, thank you for having me on. It's always a pleasure. It's yeah. always a pleasure talking yeah. about these events. Yeah, go sub to Ethan. His channel is down below. It's been on the there in the description for the last few uh, few uploads. So uh, go ahead and sub to him. Um, we'll continue to, uh, you to cover this here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps me out and helps you make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful evening, guys. Stay safe.